The Fire Within by Crystal Lacey. We're on page 177, Seeking Gawain. What's going on, David asked, pacing the kitchen, arms outstretched. Come on, you've lived here longer than I have. Are those dragons real or what? Bonington, sitting on the stool by the table, turned his head as a tenant swept by. And you're human. What about her? Is she some sort of guardian type? One of those special people she was going on about? She's not normal, that's for sure. Any normal person would need hands like oven gloves to touch that doorknob. I could have been scarred for life. Bonington responded with a dragon-like yawn. As if by magic, a, spell, a smell of burning filled the air. David dived toward the stove and yanked the, gr the grill pan away from the heat. Great, two servings of badly charred toast. He glanced at the as his beans to check their progress. An orange volcano was forming in the pan. It erupted with a sort of alien glop, splattering its lava over the warmer. The tenant closed his eyes. Maybe it hadn't been such a good idea to make his own dinner, after all. But as several hours had now gone by since Liz had shut herself away in the den, it was either this or leftover gelatin or raid the cat's treats. Or starve. Of course, she'll say it's a medical condition, like tennis elbow or housekeeper's knee. He grabbed a wooden spoon and stirred the beans that hadn't welded themselves to the bottom of the pan. Potter's palm, that's what she'd call it. She's always got some clever response. Bonington twizzled a sympathetic ear. It's all wrapped up with that story, said David, spreading his toast with lashings of butter, then glopping a hill of beans on top. What did she mean the fire of Gawain is always in Lucy? And how come he had violet eyes? She's always paints them green. And what's this fire tear thing? What's that all about? They don't cry sparks when they weep, do they? Is that why you shouldn't make them sniffly? They might set the house on fire. A row, went Bonington, choosing that moment to dab a paw at a rivulet of butter dripping from the toast in David's hands. Get off, said the tenant, jerking back and spraying beans across the tabletop. Terrific. He put down his toast and reached for a cloth. When he turned back, Bonington was licking his plate. David sighed. This wasn't his day. All right, he conceded. If you want it that badly, you might as well have it. He wiped the plate from under Bonington's nose. He whipped the plate from under Bonington's nose and scraped the whole mess into the bowl marked "cat." Bonington jumped down, sniffed at the beans, and promptly walked away. That's it," said David. "I'm going to bed." Brup went Bonington and ran for the blanket. Sleep was a long time coming that night, no matter how tightly he cuddled Winston, played imaginary soccer, counted sheep. David just couldn't seem to drift off. To make matters worse, every time he closed his eyes, Liz's storytelling voice echoed through his mind. Do you dream it, David? The words beat like a throb of a drum. Dream. Like a song. That wouldn't leave his head. Dream. Dream. Till the rhythm of it overpowered him, and his eyes became heavy, and he did not off. Then, not surprisingly, a dream did come, a rather strange dream about a dragon. It began on a, on the landing outside the den. He was wearing his coat over his pajamas. He had a tea cozy on his head a pair of oven gloves on his hands, and a well-burned slice of toast in his pocket. But then it was a dream. The door to the den was closed, the sign still warning him not to enter. This time he heeded it. Wearily avoiding the polished handle, he knelt down and peeked through the keyhole instead. A dragon's face peeked back. It had huge, soppy, violet-colored eyes, but it wasn't made of clay. This dragon was real. Hello, David whispered dreamily to it. 
The dragon blinked. Its scaly green ears prickled up and sh swiveled. David had a feeling he should know its name, but the dream wouldn't bring it to mind for the moment. Is Gawain in there? The dragon blew a wisp of smoke from his nose. It rolled its eyes and l looked to one side. After a moment, it nodded its head. May I come in and see how he is? The dragon's mouth crinkled up at the edges. The eyes took on a worried expression. It slowly shook its head. David patted his oven gloves together. Are you a guard dragon? The dragon trilled proudly and patted its feet. Another fine wisp of smoke hit the air. Come on, you can let me have a little peek, he said David. I'll give you this piece of toast if you do. He took the bread from his pocket. The guard dragon's eyes lit up like sparklers. It looked quite interested in the idea of toast, especially the crispy blackened bits. David grinned. Rather strangely, even for a dream, he folded the toast into a tiny square and pushed it through the keyhole. It landed right at the guard dragon's feet. The dragon bent its head. David raised one glove to the doorknob. There was a rustle. The guard dragon st stiffened its scales. It seemed to know it was being tricked. In bed, David gave a nervous twitch. In his dream, he decided to risk the door. I only want to know what's going on, he whispered, and gripped the handle as he had before. A blaze of fire left the guard dragon's mouth. Yow! cried David and sat bolt upright, wide awake, flapping his hand. In bed, Bonington curled at the bottom of the blanket, burbled in annoyance, and settled again. Sorry, David muttered. Dragon dream, Bonners. Bonington gave a caddy yawn. He lifted his head and fastened his coppery-eyed gaze on the window. David turned to look, anxiously wondering if a dragon wasn't there peering in through the glass. It was then he remembered that a dragon should have been peering out through the glass. Gadzooks, he wasn't on the window sill. David pulled on his bathrobe and puttered silently into the living room. Gadzooks was on the table where Lucy had left him. David lifted him into his hands. You're a special dragon, aren't you? He whispered. Gadzooks chewed the end of his pencil in silence. David ran a fingernail along the dragon's scales. A series of clinks echoed around the room. Yep, most definitely clay. I must be going nuts, the tenant muttered. Guard dragons, special people, hurrying noises. He smiled and tapped Gadzook's snout. You're beautiful, but how can you possibly be real? Come on, your windowsill awaits. And with that, he carried Gadzook's to his room, completely unaware as he sat him down of the tiny flash of light in the dragon's eye. A light that could have been anything at all. A reflection from the reading lamp on his desk, a flicker of moonlight over the crescent, or, if he truly believed in dragons, the gentle glimmer of a fire within. Page 184, and next it'll be Dragon Pox 185.